Yo, what's going on, Epic7? I'm Sue, and this is my beginner's guide to Abyss Floor 114. Floor 114 will have you facing off against Stage Ball and Cezanne in what is arguably my least favorite floor in all of Abyss, hence my lack of enthusiasm in this video for this floor. This fight is just way too damn long and way too tedious. If you don't believe me, look at the runtime of the video. This is easily going to be the longest video in the entire series. The core mechanic here is Ball's ultimate, Eye of Death. Eye of Death gains various effects throughout the fight, and to see which effect it has gained, you have to look at the icon that is below Stage Ball and Cezanne's health bar. In order to actually guard the beneficial effects, you have to consult this passive here, Energia, right? Energia basically tells you how to beat the fight. To guard the ultimates, you have to correctly hit a series of color-coded lanterns that spawn alongside Sage, Ball, and Cezanne. Each lantern gives you a beneficial effect as well as a negative effect. The beneficial effect is the thing that lets you guard the ultimate so that that way you don't lose the fight. But then the negative effect is something that you might potentially be stuck with until Sage, Ball, and Cezanne uses their next ultimate. If you pick the wrong lantern, you probably die and have to restart. And it takes like 10 or 15 minutes just to get to Sage Ball and Cezanne. So that sucks. If you time the lantern buff wrong. Because it only lasts for a very short window. And it's very easy to do. Then there's a good chance you also die. And have to restart. Patience and reading comprehension and critical thinking. Are paramount in this floor. Like if you don't have patience. If you don't think it through read things over, double check things, you will die and you're just never going to get off the floor. No matter what team I show you, you will just never get off the floor. So you have to make sure that you are taking things slow, steady, and double check everything. All right, let's talk about the lanterns now. The red lantern, aka the thermal powered energy, gives a barrier which guards the AoE version of the Eye of Death, but you gain a negative effect of you can't be buffed until you hit a new lantern. The blue lantern, aka the water-powered Energia, gives immunity for one turn, which allows you to block his multi-turn stun attack, but then you cannot be healed by anything until you hit a new lantern. And then finally, we have the green lantern, the wind-powered Energia. It gives you a one-turn re-raise buff to allow you to dodge his instant kill attack, but then you are permanently defense broken until you hit a new lantern. Note that only one lantern spawns per ultimate cycle, so if you kill it early, well then you probably die. When in doubt, switch to the red lantern as it's got the most situations where you'll live. I'll point those out in the live commentary. The fight's so long that you'll probably see every single possible combination of things that could go right or could go wrong, right? Now, we're not done with Sage Ball and Cezanne's mechanics. To make matters worse, this character seems to take no bonus damage from things like Arky or Daydream Joker, so don't bother playing them. And he also cleanses a defense break at the end of every single turn, so you can't even burst him down, even if you wanted to. The only way to go through the fight is to play the stupid little reading comprehension game for like 20 minutes or something crazy like that, right? Now... Last thing before we get off of this character is this passive here, Supply Energy. Whenever you attack Sage Ball and Cezanne, they gain one stack of Termination Energy, and at six stacks, they counter with an AoE attack, which does moderate damage. If you are defense broken from the Green Lantern, that could outright end your run. So that is something that you have to be super aware of. Now, the first floor here is equally as stupid as Sage Ball and Cezanne, and this is against the King Snow Slime. At the start of the battle here, I believe it's this passive here, Mucus, right? As you can see, it fully decreases effect resistance of non-green elemental targets. 2-0, right? So straight up, effect resistance is worthless. Do not bother with it, like, at all on this floor. For the entire first floor, also, your entire team is unbuffable. It cannot be dispelled, so... Buffs whatsoever do not work, so no attack buff, no immunity to block what's coming next also. Every time you hit this slime, you get poisoned. And again, it ignores effect resistance. 
Every time a slime hits you, you get hit with unhealable. The slime's ultimate, right? Which I believe is, uh, I'm looking to see. Uh, where are we here? I think it's this one, right? Sap cover. Yeah, this thing does insane damage based on the number of poison stacks you have on you because it detonates all of your poisons and does big damage based on how many poison stacks are on you, right? So obviously, we need cleansers to keep poison off of us because everything we do gives us unhealable and poison and it's not cool. Upon defeating this slime, he puts three uncleansable poison stacks on your entire team for five turns if those characters are not green characters right so to clarify if you play a green character when he dies they won't get the poison stacks but anybody else who is not green is going to take a bunch of poison stacks now after you kill the first slime he spawns three more of them that are exactly the same with like the same health right but they get faster when you attack them so you're gonna have to deal with three times the uh boss again right that's really not good to get past the first floor you would preferably want all of your units to be green if at all possible if you play four non-green units what will end up happening is you will kill the first slime get a bunch of poison stacks have to kill a second slime because if not you will die to its ultimate and then have six poison stacks in addition to any other stacks you have from hitting the slimes and then you'll be in a situation where maybe the first stacks aren't about to wear off yet and you'll have to kill a second slime otherwise you wipe and then you'll be stuck with nine poison stacks and at that point like at the start of your turn your character just explodes so you can't really play four non-green units right the only strategy that really works for this floor is playing two green units one of which is your tank and your damage dealer and then like two green soul weavers or just soul weavers in general right and that's going to provide or i should say pose a massive challenge for me here on this account you probably will have an easier time than me recording this video because the thing is i'm playing only three stars connection heroes and expert hunt heroes which means i don't have access to if you go to the statistics page here I don't have access to a lot of the best characters that are on Abyss Floor 114, like Destina or Rowana. I can't use Landy on Bloodstone to help with healing. I can't use Ray, right? If you have any of these three Soul Weavers, please, please, please play them. They'll make your life so much easier. If you have to go the route that I'm going, where you're playing just Tamarin and Angelic Montmorency, it is going to be really, really difficult. Ideally, the best team comp, Green Tank, Two green Soul Weavers, one green DPS, especially if you manage to pick up Landy on her recent banner as I'm recording this video. That will be the best way to do this. And the reason I'm playing these two as my Soul Weavers is because the three-star options are simply not good enough, right? If I tried to play Bernard, he cannot reliably get rid of the unhealable that is going to be plaguing my team throughout the fight, and therefore he becomes useless. And Jekt can only heal by giving buffs to my team, which as we established, you cannot buff on the first floor at all versus the slimes. So therefore, the only like semi free to play friendly clear that I could find is the team of four characters you're looking at on your stream right now. As far as I am aware, there's like maybe one four star only abyss clear on all of YouTube and everybody else uses paid units. So this is pretty much it, right? This is this team you see here is the most free to play friendly team you will probably see on all of YouTube across all of the guides that have been made uh, thus far, at least to my knowledge. Anyways, enough yapping. Let's talk about who we're playing. I am on Falconer Clurry as my tank, and that is only because she is green. That's it. There's not really anyone else that I can play here. As for what I'm playing, you can play Arius here if you want. I was dying a lot with Clurry on Arius, so I decided to go with Grail of Blood, right? Which is a three-star artifact just to help with some sustain. You can play whatever the heck you want in this slot. I am on Health Percentage Necklace, Health Percentage Ring, and Boots are on Health Percentage as well because I wanted my Clary to be slower because her being super fast actually makes it so that sometimes the Lantern phase gets wonky and the timing does not line up. 
and that's bad, so I don't want that. So slower is surprisingly better on Falcon or Clary. Like 160 to 1 like 90 speed is probably the threshold that you want to actually be on. As for our damage dealer, I decided to go with uh Vivian here because it's like my only real option as a primary green damage dealer. Again, you have to play a green damage dealer, like take your pick. Whatever you have access to, right? That could be like a main damage dealer. Like if you wanted to play like Celine, sure, go for it, right? As I was saying earlier, if you pull manage to pull Landy, Landy is fantastic here. Uh Midnight Galilius, if you pulled her, Zahawk, like and, and just take your pick. It doesn't really matter. What character you choose, just pick a green damage dealer. I'm on a symbol of unity as my artifact, crit damage on the necklace, attack percentage on the ring, boots are speed. For the exclusive equipment here, I am on the vitality drain for the extra 5% combat readiness. Although I will point out that, uh, where, let me see, it is this one that dispels one debuff is actually fairly useful here. Even though you can't gain buffs during this fight, having... An extra cleanse on your team can't help or can't hurt, I should say, uh, whenever you get unbuffable on your entire team. That is super valuable. Now, the last two characters are going to be our Soul Weavers in Tamarin and Angelic Montmorency. And that is just because they're pretty much the only free to play options that I can choose. You could choose whatever you want for your Soul Weavers. Ideally, Destina would be great. If you have Destina, it makes this fight so much easier. But again, I don't have Destina. Wanderous Potion Vial on one of your Soul Weavers, preferably Tamarin, with health percentage here as the uh, Ring and Necklace, and then the boots are going to be speed. And then we could just jump down here to Angelic Montmorency, who I think is actually more valuable, in my opinion, than Tamarin, because of the frequency at which she gets rid of the unhealables and the poisons on the very first floor. Magaraha's Tome here is going to be our artifact of choice. And then we have health percentage here on the Necklace. Health percentage of the ring, because remember, effect resistance is a worthless dead stat here on this floor, and the boots are speed. All right, enough yapping about the introduction. It's been so long now, but again, there's so many mechanics and things to talk about. Let's jump into the actual fight, and you can see how truly nightmarish and long this thing is. All right, so this floor is pretty simple in terms of what you have to do. It's just... S1 every turn with Vivian, like pretty much no matter what, her other two skills are effectively blank unless you need to pass her turn for whatever reason, uh, in which case you just use S3 for no effect. And then Montmorency is on duty to heal the various different poison stacks, and then you just let Potion Vial and Tamarin's Idol take care of the rest of the debuffs. You have to pay attention to the unhealable. This is the most important debuff to get rid of. Like, it, it, it literally has to go whenever possible. That is what's going to end up getting you killed. Go here, we'll hit this, because this ultimate prioritizes characters with poison, right? And having multiple poisons is bad here. I don't want Vivian to be at risk of ever getting hit by a detonate if I can help it. Of course, she's going to keep dual attacking, though, and uh, that's not good for us. Alright, so we can idle here to top off Vivian. Now we have idle mode. S2 here, clear these off. We'll save that defense break. It's about to die. Then save idle mode. We can get rid of the unhealable on Clurry. And go again. All right, so it uses ultimate. And now you'll see that it's dead. Three undispellable poisons on each of my non-green units. Had I played four non-green units, this would have sucked. Because then you'd be taking a ton of damage uh, each turn. All right, let's go for 
a defense breaker on one of these other slimes. And then let's idle mode to try to ramp up the offense. And also, most importantly, cycle out of these poison stacks. So we go S1 here. We can go basic here. Basic here. Unhealable, that's gotta go. Unfortunately, since that's an AoE, it speeds up all of the slimes. Alright, for Montmorency here, now let's full burn this. Alright, let's look at the little thing here. Oh, yeah, I think I think we'll be fine. I want to keep Vivian's poison stacks uh, low because remember, it's going to prioritize characters with poison stacks for these ultimates. So what we can do is we could kind of cheat a little bit and just S3 to pass Vivian's turn. And then have this hit here. And then see, it'll prioritize the Clurry. Hit here. Unhealable, so that's got to get cleansed whenever possible. Especially because we have uh, three ults coming up. I'm going to skill three just to have her not get poison. We'll soul burn here. We'll top everybody off, get rid of all their debuffs. Hit here. Goes into Motmo. So now we can hit here right and then that'll go here and then no matter what vivian hits here it's gonna go into her unless you get a dual attack like that you can see a bunch of poison stacks again because we killed one all right so we want to idle mode here you gotta cycle out of these uh undispellable poisons again if you play um, a team that has more damage than mine, you might be in a situation where you end up with six or nine of these debuffs if you can kill these slimes even faster than me. Um, and that's potentially problematic. So again, unfortunately, even though it takes forever, slow and steady is the way to play through this floor, it feels like. Alright. All right, let's pass here because it'll go. We don't want to accidentally like upset it. I think. Hope it goes into flurry. It does. All right, let's cleanse these off here. All right, and that gets rid of unhealable. Dodge the unhealable because we're green. Push up. Hit here. Hit here. Hmm. Hit two. I don't want to push one up. I want to have uh, there be an opportunity to heal up some of these other ones. Okay, so now there's a three, one in three chance it goes into Vivian. All right, cool. Got a little bit lucky there. Defense break here. All right, we soul burn here. Top off Montmorency. Gotta get rid of that unhealable. Can't let that stick around. Uh, didn't get the cleanse that I was looking for here. Alright. I went there. So now, this goes next. It's gonna go into Clurry guaranteed if I S3. So we could heal up here. I'll save idle mode in case I get another unhealable in a second. Like 
close your eyes. Oh, so we have two options here. I think we are going to go for the idol this time. I just want to ramp up the offense a little bit here. All right, so let's go and heal Let me take Flurry here, so that, that way the detonate does not go into anybody like for any amount of serious damage. Same thing here, we just skip our turn with the S2. No real damage, because we have no poisons. We hit here. Are you confident? Yep, and then we have our poisons back on our Soul Weavers. And now it's pretty manageable with only one character here poisoned. Or I should say one slime left to poison us, so not that big of a deal. Very interesting. I'll do my best. Shine free. A little harder, Go for the defense break. I'm all ready. I will do my best. Alright. Okay. Heal up here. One here. S one here. I'll keep going. Uh we can force this into Tamarin. But I won't give up. Is, is then we can heal up some of that damage. Like Hopefully you're starting to see the pattern here, right? Like it's always gonna go after the one with poison stacks on it, and it's random if there's multiple poisons. So you just wanna try to Get it to go into not your damage dealers. Very close. Almost died there. I'm, scared. I'm actually going to idle mode here just to heal everybody up. Because idle's not super amazing on the next floor either. So we're just doing it for the healing. Unhealable. Alright, and now we're off the floor finally, but see, we start the next floor even with poisons. Okay. Now, we take a look at the icon. The icon is decreases current health of all enemies by 80%. So that is the red lantern. The one that dodges the AoE because it does all enemies by 80 percent this is also your only real time to use buffs so if you want them take them now you can't close your eyes. heal up here I'll help you. we can go s3 to cycle heal up vivian so he does two of these in a row and they do pretty significant damage can heal up here again. S1 Sage Ball. As you can see, we don't do a lot of damage, right? We're going to S3 just for the souls, because as you'll see in a second, it's just going to go away. So it's not really like a super impactful thing to use on this fight. And one here. One here. And now he's at Termination 6 here, right? So if I hit him, I'm gonna get a I'm gonna get AoE. So I think we just have to take it and pray Vivian lives. Is that all you can do? We can go idle mode here. Now keep in mind, he has Eye of Death up. So look at your CR bar, right? Cameron's obviously not cutting. Right? Tamarin is not going to cut in front of Sage Ball. So what we're going to do here is we're going to go S2. S1 here. And then Vivian, even though she's my main damage dealer, she's last in line here, right? It looks like. No, Clurry's last in line. So Clurry's going to go next. So we can hit here. Whoever is last in line, you need to hit the lantern with. And of course, I didn't hit the lantern. <laughs> and as you can see, I am in a lot of trouble now. Because I did not hit the lantern. Thankfully, we did not wipe 
but I didn't think Clary would actually not cut there. Anyways, same thing here, same effect, demon. Three energy here. I'm going to soul burn this because I need the health. That's going to put me at five energy, and this is going to force me to take damage. So now we're going to have to try to climb out of that hole for not having the correct uh, lantern being chosen. Thankfully, that was not the green lantern. We would have wiped there on the spot. Alright, so we go here. Two. We can go... I think we go mana amplification here. Those do not take any poison stacks here. All right, we hit here. Three energy. Four energy. Five energy. Honestly, might as well proc it here. And then we have two energy. He's just going to dispel it, so I'll wait for a, a better window I think but I still want to use it at least like maybe next turn at latest because I want the souls Very interesting. or close your eyes. Go keep tabs on that energy I will do my best. all right let's go here maybe I'm working too hard. and now if this pushes Vivian I would be very sad but the next character here, right, should be Sage Ball, unless I push Vivian. So I'm one away here from this going off, so I'm gonna hit the red lantern now. I'm sorry I hurt you. And then the barrier will block most of the damage for me. And now we have Terminate, which is it kills whoever it hits, which means we have to go for the green one. When the time is right. Alright. So. What I'm going to do. Because we know the green one is the one that we need to hit. I'm actually going to hit this red one here for the barrier. Because I don't remember where I'm at on termination count. I don't want to keep things safe. S3 here for the souls. Get idle mode here. All right, is this termination? It is, okay. Very interesting. All right, we go for the S1. Even with defense break, it still just does no damage. So he's on five right now. So we get terminated on our next hit. Let's soul burn here with Montmorency to get rid of all of this and heal everybody up. Take the termination here. Heal up here. You can see our push up here with hammering. That's one. That's one. So we're at termination five. Okay, we're still in pretty good shape, so we can go for this here and take the termination. Can hit here. Or on termination energy. Go like this. And now, again, someone's going to die here, so I have to hit here. Yeah, so I hit the green one to get the re-raise. But Clurry dies, but she comes back because we're protected. And now we're on Ruin, right? Guns all enemies. So I have to hit the blue one this time when the time is right. So I'm going to heal up here, right? But I don't want to stay defense broken because I'm going to take way too much damage. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to hit the red one here and get the barrier and get everyone off of defense break. 
right? So that's kind of like a little life hack for this floor here. So we go S1 here. So the next one is Termination Energy. Let's Soulburn Montmorency. Keep everybody topped off. We'll S3 for the souls here. And then we'll just S1 and proc the Termination Energy. Because Tamarin can just heal the damage by going idle here. Alright. Go here. Yep, just attack here. S2 to get rid of all those poisons. S1 here. So we're at termination four. Five. So here's gonna be six. Getting just S2 here. No soul burn this time, which we'll save up some of our souls. Very interesting. All right. Hit here. S two. The R push. All right. So Cameron's last in line here again. Ultimate. Make sure we know stun. So we have to go for the blue one with Tamarin. Go here. Can't you handle this? Termination five. Oh, actually, we're going to lap back around. So I think we're going to take this termination. I'm Hit here. And then Flurry hits the blue one. And now... We are here. Now let's pray that we get the AoE one on the barrier because we might be in trouble. Okay, so it's the stun one again. Hmm. Okay, that's fine. So we have to get off of the stun mode because we can't heal as fast as possible. And so since it is the stun one, we can kind of cheat it, go back to the red one. Alright, so now we can heal our characters again. And we have this barrier. Heal everybody back up. Go for the defense break just for the souls, I guess. Cleansed it. Hit here. S2 to heal up. Idle mode. Yeah, so as you can see, we're already 20 minutes into this fight. I told you, it's very, very miserable. It's just a slow and steady wins the race kind of fight. So we take the termination. Go here. Ooh, that, that dual attack actually might have killed me. Just not Vivian here, please. Okay, whew! Again, a little bit of luck is necessary, I feel like, on this floor. Let's soul burn here. We got a ton of souls, so... Again, ultimate's coming up. Gotta keep an eye on that. Alright. So let's go... S2. Alright, so she's got to be the one that triggers it. So we go S1 here into the blue one. Uh-oh. She's going to get stunned, it looks like, maybe. Oh well, nothing I can do. I guess we just go mana amplification to pass our turn and pray that that's enough. See, again, things have to time correctly. Thankfully, it goes clurry here. Alright, so now it's death again, right? But I'm unhealable, so we want to go back to green, uh, to red mode, sorry. And we're going to save the green here for when we're, you know, close to another ultimate. Alright, we can proc termination here while we still have our barrier. And hit here. Just 
All right, let's go defense break here. Get a little bit of chip damage in before it gets cleansed with uh, Vivian. Go here. Again, I want to get whatever damage I can get in while it's defense broken before it gets cleansed in a second. We, can, we have to hit here. Nothing else we can do. We're just taking that termination. Nothing we can do. Alright, so we're going to heal up here. Here's here. It pushed Vivian with the S1. All right, now obviously Sage goes next, so we hit this one to save our team so that nobody dies. Uh oh, Mont Morancy. Mont Morancy, why you lap? No, Clurry passive, no. Okay. So we just hit here and just pray that this doesn't go into Mont Morancy. Otherwise, she is dead. So we killed Clurry. All right. So now we are on this one barrier one and so this is like the worst set of rng when you go green to red because i could go for the barrier but then i'm gonna have to struggle like i did at the start and honestly i think that's okay i don't want to be defense broken if in the case that we get hit with termination off a counter so i'm actually gonna use the recommended lantern early and just accept the fact that i am going to lose most of my life and i'm gonna have to burst heal out of it when we get that far. See, had I taken that termination, I would have just died there. This is why I'm saying it's like a, a comprehension check. Basic attack here. Get the poisons off here. See our push up. One here. Are you confident? I'm scared. There's termination. We're gonna have to soul burn Montmorency. Interesting. Fight a little harder. Actually, no, the healing from Clory might be able to stabilize us. Save that S3. So far so good. Go S1 here. S2 here to top everybody off. And now we have idle mode to kind of recover after the next move. Same thing, I want to save that, I think. I actually want to S3 here just because we're at termination 4. I don't want to accidentally proc termination. Yeah, I don't, I, I don't trust this, like, not getting dual attack, so I'm just going to S3 to pass my turn. If I dual attack, I just die here, so I'm not I'm not really trying to do that. Not when I'm this close to winning. Alright, so it's the same one, same mode. But now we're kind of like force corrected. And then we can soul burn Montmorency, and that'll burst heal everyone else back up to full. And then we can continue to do more damage. So this will hit us with termination. An S2 here. Hit here. S1 here. And this is going to hit us with termination. We're going to take big damage. But we can kind of heal back up here with Tamarin's S2. S1 on Sage Ball. S1 Ball. S2 just to get the poisons are gone. 
That's one. Can't you handle this? That right here. Termination's at four. We can burn on Matma. Alright, we're at full, so we can proc termination here. You can't close your eyes. We have S2 here, and now we have to take the barrier. Very interesting. Then we get eyed here. Now let's see what we get next. Alright, so it's still the same mode. Alright, that's fortunate for us. We're on good RNG. Didn't get that. Get S2 here. Hit here. Idle up. I really wish I could Arky here, but it doesn't really do anything. So we're just stuck sitting here, slowly whittling him down. We can go soul burn this because we're flush with souls just to top off. But that way we kind of keep our life total high off that counter, off termination. In S here, S2 here. Counts on three. See our push up. Hmm. I'm going to burn this just because the, the termination counts reasonably high and I'm going to have to attack no matter what here. Yeah, we'll just go here. Hit that. That procs it. one here Fight a little harder. all right so now we go assuming this also push mop Morancia up we go here get the barrier Just a moment. there we go so that blocks it now let's see what we get next time actually that's the biggest lie ever told it will take long terminate here is our next thing that's coming up so that means that we have to go for the green one this time until I'm situated, I'm just gonna actually S3 here. You can't close your eyes. Go away. Oh, got it, Blurry. Just like we practiced. Alright, this will give me at least one hit. If this actually gets a defense break, we'll at least get one hit in before it gets cleansed. Sadly not the case. S2 here. We can idle here, get rid of everything, get Vivian back up to the front. And an S1 here. We'll burn this just to heal everybody back up. Alright, so we're going into about to get ulti territory again. We're so close. The ending is nigh. Very interesting. It's too soon to be surprised. This is my push everybody up. Got it, Blurry. Just like we practiced. I'll keep going. Alright, we can go here. All right, and then Vivian should be night last one up, so we hit green. No matter what awaits us. All right, the Clurry dies here, comes back because of the buff, and then we're on the stun one, which means we don't want to be defense broken. We want to get the hell off the defense one, and uh, hit the red one. I'm all, ready. all right, now we could go back to. 
hopefully killing it in this rotation. Alright. Heal up here with Tamarin. We're going to have idle mode in a second. I'm actually going to just soul burn this to guarantee the defense break. So that, that way, hopefully, Vivian kills on the next attack. Same thing. We're just going to go here. I want the damage. Oof. And there you go. Abyss 4114 in a nutshell. It only took... A half hour? My god. I told you, this floor sucks. Hopefully, it's a lot easier for you if you have characters like Destina, Rowana, Green Ray, or any other high-powered green DPS. This is literally the most free-to-play option that you can get, and it's miserable. If you have better teams, please let your fellow players know down in the comment section below. If you have any more questions, feel free to leave them down there as well. Oh, I wish I could say the next floor is going to be easier than this one, but um, it's not. The next floor is uh, Abyss Floor 115, and it is probably the most difficult of all the floors that is still remaining. So, you know the drill. Enjoy the rest of your day, the rest of your week, and I'll see you all in Abyss Floor 115. Later now.